Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm so pleased and, and honored to be here. This, this week has just knocked my socks off, just one speaker after another and, and all of you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the five valve turners. And so uh, the two folks on the left, Emily Johnston and Annette Klapstein, they closed the tar sands valve in Minnesota. And Annette is a, what's called a raging granny. I don't know if you guys have heard of, there are gaggles of raging grannies, especially all over the United States and, and Canada. And she and I are about the same age. I'm 65 and, and she's 64. We're the, the oldest of the five. Annette has, has been fighting the good fight, trying to stop the, the harm for a number of years and, and most recently with the raging grannies. And Emily Johnston is, is a poet. She has a, a book of poetry uh, about the effect of climate change on the non-human occupants of this planet that just really uh, gets you where you live. Um, she's a, a very outstanding activist, as is Michael with 350 Seattle. Seattle's really rocking it right now. And then uh, Ken Ward just had his trial. He was the first of the five of us to go to trial. He went to trial in Mount Vernon, Washington. He had a number of charges to start with, including the coolest one, which was assemblage of saboteurs. That was actually dropped because he ended up not having the assemblage anymore as they dropped the charges as well they should against the, the videographers, the folks covering the action in a journalistic way. Michael will be t talking more about himself. Uh, I want to say a little bit. He has founded several organizations. His children are plaintiffs in the Children's Trust case against the state of Washington. He brought an organization called Plant for the Planet, and he can tell you about that. The James Hansen plan to ramp down on emissions includes the planting of one trillion trees uh, to, to work on not only stopping putting carbon into the atmosphere, but to draw that carbon down. He'll be talking more about that at the end. I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself, especially as we started talking about what we did in the action. Um, I was often introduced as the least likely to, to do direct action, to, to risk arrest. In the way I've spent my life and what I've done, I probably look very much like you students' parents or probably grandparents. I want to introduce you just very briefly to my mentor. Uh, you, you students were really fortunate in having Jay, folks like Jay and Will and Dave um, act as, as mentors for you. That, that makes such a huge difference to have someone that can help you see outside the, the confines of, of your experience and help you think about things in different ways. And so Joanna Macy is, is one of my mentors. She's the, the mentor that transitioned me from having drank the Kool-Aid and, and being part of business as usual when I, I married, I, I kind of bought into the, the whole American dream, the, the house, the car, um, the career, uh, all of that. And so in a workshop in 2007 with Joanna Macy in, in Oregon, the two kind of top level things that I was exposed to were the, the work that reconnects spiral her work um, in broad terms is called The Great Turning, a transition from an industrial growth society to a life-sustaining civilization. And the work that reconnects is, is a preparation for activists. And that's not using the term activist just to refer to direct action and risking arrest. Uh, Joanna catalogs the work of the great turning into three dimensions. And so I want to talk about first the, the four 
parts of the spiral. There's opening up to gratitude. Um, that's a, a very energizing and centering thing to think about all the things that we have to be thankful just being alive in this world in the natural world is such a huge part of that the next is is owning our pain for the world i spent most of my life knowing in some deep dark place that things were horribly wrong and and i think that so much of our culture has that same nagging um, thing. There's so much depression, so much anger, so much violence, I think, comes a lot from that place of, of not really facing what's wrong and, and really grieving for that. And, um, and the, the purpose is to take that grief, to take that pain, and convert it into energy for activism. It's going from being disabled and crippled by that pain to being energized by it. And then the, the third stage is seeing with new eyes, and the fourth is going forth into the work for the great turning. And so Joanna describes the great turning having three dimensions of work. There's the work that I've focused on, but I want to say it's not the only place I'm putting my energy, but it is especially with the valve turning um, it, we didn't commit just to that single day of action. We committed to what we thought would be a year or more of, of leveraging that action to get whatever attention we could to the crisis that we're in, talking about it, educating, um, maybe inspiring others to find what they're calling in the great turning, uh, which dimension that they might focus on. And so the, the first is actions to slow the damage to the earth and, and all beings on the earth. The second is an analysis, very much what you guys, the purpose uh, of this conference, analysis of structural causes and the creation of structural alternatives. And we've heard um, so many inspiring things this week from the speakers in, in that regard. And then I, I want to read a little bit about the shift in consciousness. Um, so uh, these, this, the structural alternatives that, um, th that we're coming up with, partly in this conference, can't take root and survive without deeply ingrained values to sustain them. They must mirror what we want and how we relate to the earth and each other. They require, in other words, a profound shift in our perception of reality. And that shift is happening now, both as a cognitive revolution and spiritual awakening. The insights and experiences that enable us to make this shift are accelerating, and they may take many forms. They arise as grief for our world, giving the lie to old paradigm notions of rugged individualism, the essential separateness of the self. They arise as a glad response to breakthroughs in scientific thought as reductionism and materialism give way to evidence of, of a living universe and they arise in the resurgence of wisdom traditions. I'm so glad that we added Joseph Grady uh, to, to the schedule. Uh, I really appreciated his conversation with Derek Jensen, really talking about the sickness that infected the, the European traditions um, that gave rise to, to wars of conquest, to uh, domination and, and exploitation of, of people and life. Reminding us again that our world is a sacred whole worthy of adoration and service. And as you can see, uh, Joanna's uh, 80, I think she's 84 now. She's been doing wonderful work for 50 years and just such an inspiration to me. I wanted to emphasize that um, the timing and the part, a good part of the impetus for the action was solidarity with Standing Rock, all of us were not only so inspired by the power and the effectiveness of it, but also the resonance with uh, the values that we hold, a very strict adherence to nonviolence, uh, a, a deep reverence to the sacredness of life, and a spiritual tradition. And I don't think a spiritual tradition is just having to do with religion. For example, 
Emily and Annette, I think both would say that they don't adhere to a spiritual tradition, but the, both of them are, are such a great example of people that just really are in touch with how sacred life is. And then finally, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the five of us. Bill McKibben, when he talked to us, talked about the unique responsibility of us older folks, that the impact of direct action, the threat of arrest, don't make nearly as much difference for us at the end of our life as it does young folks that are just beginning their life. So that's, that's the, the five of us, and, and I'll run that short video. This is what I'm called to do, uh, direct action, actually putting myself in, in the way of the harm that's being done. It is so blissful to actually see a place where I can apply that calling, where I can take action that has a chance of making a difference.